Well, happy Women's Golf Day, everyone. Today, June 1st, is Women's Golf Day. Women's Golf Day happens annually on the first Tuesday of every June. Oops, my, my cookie's upside down. This is a cookie. This will be eaten later. This was from, from, from my friend, Aunt Fee, who knows that I love cookies and I love Women's Golf Day. So today we are celebrating Women's Golf Day. And as I said, it's always the first Tuesday in June. And this is the sixth year that Women's Golf Day has happened. And it, this is an international event. There are 900 locations at 68 countries across the globe. So today, people from all over the world have been celebrating Women's Golf Day. And if you've been on social media, you've probably seen some hashtags of Women's Golf Day. The official colors of Women's Golf Day are red and white, so you can see that I'm sporting my red and white today. And we hope that you've had a chance to get out there, enjoy the game, and have some fun today. The purpose of Women's Golf Day is to, number one, celebrate women who do play golf. And number two, and so importantly, bring new women into the game. So that's the whole purpose of Women's Golf Day. And just this is, golf is such a wonderful sport. It's a wonderful way to be outside, outdoors, the camaraderie. Um, I've just had so many comments from women uh, leading up to Women's Golf Day telling me what joy golf has brought them. And truly, that's what today is for. So today is a day to celebrate ladies. So today is my Women's Golf Day clinic with Golf Town. And I am so proud to be a Golf Town brand ambassador. Golf Town sand, signed on this year for a multi-year deal that they are going to be the official retailer, Canadian retailer for Women's Golf Day. Official Canadian retailer for Women's Golf Day. And why? Because Golf Town truly supports women's golf. And that's why I became a brand ambassador. Who was Golf Town's very first brand ambassador? They could have picked any PGA Tour player, anyone to sponsor. Who was the first person that Golf Town sponsored? None other than Brooke Henderson. That's right. They picked our sweetheart, Brooke Henderson. Why? Because they believe in women's golf. And they sponsor me. I'm a 40 something year old mom and they sponsor me because Golf Town believes in moms as athletes. So that's so cool. So today we celebrate Women's Golf Day. I just want to do a shout out. I see that uh, Carol is here. She's from Long Island, New York. Hey, hope you're having a great Women's Golf Day. Uh, Caroline is here. Hello, did you play today for Women's Golf Day? I did not get to play today because I've been so busy doing interviews and, and sharing out all the joy of Women's Golf Day. So I did not get to play, but I promise you I will be making up for that tomorrow. Glenna, happy Women's Golf Day. Angela, yay, Golf Town, absolutely, and Tammy, woohoo! All right, now, ladies, this is what today's clinic's gonna look like. It's gonna be an hour, because you know I am never short on words. So what we're gonna do for the first half hour, I'm gonna do a greatest tips. So you know I've been doing Golf Town clinics for the last uh, 11 weeks, so over the last 11, 12 weeks um, that I've been running these clinics, I'm gonna give you the best of the best, and I'm gonna piece them together. So for instance, one clinic I would have talked about, turn the shirt, turn the pants, another one, brush the grass, we're gonna put the whole thing together, all the top tips in the first half hour. Then in the next half hour, it's gonna be a Q&A. Now we asked for your questions beforehand uh, because we had so many people that wanted uh, some inquiries out there. So we, we're gonna share those questions and answers with you. And I think you're gonna learn a ton today. So again, happy Women's Golf Day and we're gonna get celebrating. And just before we get started, I wanna say I'm a very proud also uh, Callaway Golf athlete. Callaway Golf is the official club of Women's Golf Day. So again, how cool is that? Callaway Golf Town, absolutely huge support of women's golf, which makes me so proud to represent both brands. All right, one more shout out. I see Chantel from Cornwall. Happy Women's Golf Day. And Jean in Maine today, she played. Oh, I hope she had some lobsters. I love lobsters there. And Carol, thank you for the tip. She's really helping me. Best wishes from the UK. Okay, you've been celebrating Women's Golf Day for seven hours before we have out here. So wonderful. And one more shout out from Ginny from Pennsylvania. So happy Women's Golf Day. All right, it is time to get started. Let's start with the top tips. We're gonna do half an hour of the top tips. First thing we need to talk about is grip. Remember, with grip, one of the biggest things that I've seen with issues in grip is that I see this butt end of the club often get buried, meaning that if I can't see the butt end of your club uh, under your glove, that's gonna be a problem. It's gonna cause that club to go everywhere when you get to the top of your backs when you're not gonna have any control. Now, if you end up having that wear mark on your glove, that probably means you're not holding the, the club properly. So just this could make a massive, massive difference. The important part uh, with grip is you need to have the grip in the base of your fingers. That is so, so important. Many ladies tend, up putting, tend on putting the uh, grip of the golf club in their palm of their hand. And again, that causes a myriad of problems and those torn gloves. So what 
what's a great way? We're gonna do the suitcase drill. So the suitcase drill means you stand up nice and tall. You're gonna hold the golf club in your lead hand. So that's the hand closest to the fairway. That would be your left hand for my righties, right hand for my lefties. So you're gonna hold the club. The first thing you wanna do is there's gonna be a white cap on the bottom of the grip. Make sure that your hand is above that white cap on the grip to, to know that it's in the proper place. Then, standing up nice and tall, I want you to bend your knees like you're picking up a briefcase or suitcase. That's how I want you to hold the handle of this golf club. If you were to open your hands, it would be in the base of your fingers. Another way to do it is how would you hold an umbrella? So again, we wanna make sure that butt end of the club is out. How would you hold an umbrella? That's where it should be in your hands. So that's step number one, super important. All right, step number two, again, super key to so many people say, okay, Lisa, talk to me about turn the shirt, turn the pants. Well, you can't do any of that without good posture. So again, this four steps to posture could be a total game changer for you. So what are my four steps to posture? Step number one, I want you to stand up nice and tall. Step number two, I want you to bow at the waist, butt sticks out. This is where my ladies struggle. Often I have my ladies tucking their bums in. That's going to be a problem. I need that butt to stick out. So step number one, stand up nice and tall, uh, shoulders back. Step number two, bow at the waist, butt sticks out. Step number three, crack the knees, not bend the knees, just crack the knees. And this one's vital. Step number four, arms hang naturally. And what do I mean by arms hang naturally? Just let them naturally hang from your shoulders. Often I see when people are golfing, they get set up to their golf club and their arms are way out here. Look at this gap here. That could be your problem right away. Boom, we can fix you today if this is what your gap looks like. And I see this especially with driver. Arms hang naturally. Why? Because when you go through your golf swing and you come through impact, this is where your hands want to be. They want to be in this natural position. So if you start your golf swing, out there by the time you get to impact you're rerouting that club and it's a sheer miracle if you're gonna get good ball contact so again arms hang naturally all right so that's my four-step process now all my ladies out there today is our women's golf day so I can talk about the girls what are the girls the girls are these what do we do do we put the arms above the girls below the girls where do those arms go and I've heard lots of women ask about this so again if you have watched my posture tip clinic you're gonna know this is where the arms go so as I said arms hang naturally that's where the arms are gonna go but the issue is I have a lot of women I would say 80% of women can't hit a golf ball over 200 yards why because they're arm lifters now not all the people who've been watching this clinic because I know through all the comments you've been turning the shirt and turning the pants but typically what women do is because we're a little bit more flexible we're arms lifters so if you took a picture at the top of my backswing you'd say wow look at what a great uh, 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 backswing she has but look at this I haven't turned one bit all I have done is lifted my arms and all I can do is drop them. And again, this is for the lady out there that let's say she has her driver. She goes to hit her driver. She hits a nice driver. She lifts those arms. She hits it and she hits it 150 yards straight down the pipe all day long. No, you are losing distance there. Why? Because you're an arms lifter. And if you're an arms lifter, here's the problem. When you're an arms lifter, you're going to bump into those bad girls all day long. Okay. So how do we fix that? That comes to our next point and again if you know through my videos there's three main tips that we're gonna leave today with okay this is tip number one and that is you need to turn the shit turn the shirt turn the pants or since it's women's golf day turn the shirt turn the skirt I like that too so turn the shirt turn the skirt so this is what we're gonna do so if, if the girls are getting in your way remember we do our four-step uh, posture process but if the girls are getting in the way, you're probably an arms lifter. So the key is you need to start your backswing with your lead shoulder. This is what should initiate the turn. If you start your backswing with your hands, you'll lift. If you start the backswing with your arms, you'll lift. If you start the backswing with your lead shoulder, it forces you to turn. You have no choice but to turn. Now, when you're turning, here's your key swing thought. A lot of people like to think back to the target. That's not bad, I like that. My, uh, the swing thought, I like a little bit better. I try to get my girls facing directly behind me. So again, if I had a golf ball here, take a peek here, if I'm an arms lifter, if I'm an arms lifter, my girls are gonna be facing the ball. If I turn with that lead shoulder, I start my backswing with the lead shoulder, boom, my girls are faced directly behind me, nowhere near facing the ball. 
all right? So that's super, super important. So we need to start our backswing with the lead shoulder, and that is what I call turn the shirt. Why? Because if you want to hit a golf ball long, you need to create coil and torque. How do we create coil and torque? We need to turn the shirt, okay? Now, when I say turn the shirt, that is just a shirt. I want the lower body to stay pretty, pretty still here. So you're gonna take that lead shoulder, turn the shirt, boom. Did you notice my legs didn't move? I do not want to see a, a slide. No slides, that's a power leak. No slides, ladies. Keep that nice and uh, still there on the bottom. So first move we do is we need to turn the shirt. So that lead shoulder, we're going to turn the shirt. Step number two is gonna be turn the pants. So it's turn the shirt in your backswing, and now we've created all this coil and torque, and in your downswing, the first move needs to be your lower body because you've wound up from the top, now you need to unwind from the bottom. So that would be your swing thought is turn your lead hip, turn your lead pocket, my favorite, turn your guts, whatever it is that makes that lower body turn. And again, it's a turn, not a slide, not a slide, because that's a power leak. So it's turn the shirt, turn the skirt. That's what I want to see. So you initiate that backswing with that lead shoulder, turn the shirt, and on the downswing, turn the skirt. Turn the shirt, turn the skirt, okay? And if we're gonna go back to what do I do with the girls, again, remember I said if you're an arms lifter, you're gonna bump into them all day long. Well, here's the magic, here's the magic. If you start that backswing with the lead shoulder, check this out, ready, 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 watch, 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 watch. Look, the girls come with you, the girls come with you, the girls come with you. Now, again, if you're probably a double D or a little bit bigger, I would say slightly underneath, but gosh, I have heard uh, people say, oh no, it's over the top. Well, look how tight and cr cramped up I am. That's gonna lead to a terrible golf swing. I've heard, oh yeah, it's one on top, one underneath. That's a mammogram, ladies, and none of us need any more of those. Oh, uh, oh please go get your mammograms, but we do, don't need extra ones. <laughs> we don't need extra ones. And again, I've heard, oh, oh you squeeze them together, squeeze them together. Well, anytime you're squeezing, guess what you're creating? Tension. And tension is a club head speed killer. So no squeezing, ladies. I don't want to see the squeeze, okay? I want to see you turn the, sh turn the shoulder and those girls will come with you. And again, if you're a double D or a little bit bigger, maybe slightly underneath, but really the key is arms hang naturally. Shoulders back, chest out, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees, arms hang naturally. Okay, now this is gonna lead us to our next, my next favorite tip, you know there's three of them. Number one is turn the shirt, turn the skirt, okay? Number two is going to be brush the grass. But before we get there, I just wanna do a shout out. Caroline, you're smiling at me, you're too crazy. Life's too short not to be fun, right Caroline? I love it. Tara, thanks so much. Uh, oh, I missed what her question is, it flew away there. So I'll, I'll definitely, if I miss any of your questions, ladies, you know I go back, it takes me days to respond to, usually there's five, 600 comments and I respond to every single one. So I, I will respond if I missed any of your uh, comments there. And Patty says the girls shall be chuckling on that part, turn part, right? If it can make you laugh, you're gonna remember it. And I like that. Daniela says she loves my lessons. Thank you so much. And Elena loving the tips. So awesome, thank you so much. Okay, let's get to tip number two and that is brush the grass. Okay, so how do we get to brush the grass? Now ladies, I didn't talk about this in my earlier brush the grass, but I'm gonna refer to this now because I think this is gonna make a lot of sense because we're talking about posture. Now, what I see, as I told you from ladies typically, they have a nice straight back because again, why is posture important? Posture is important because if we want to create coil and torque, we need to turn around our spine. If we have a hunched spine, it is really hard to turn around, okay? So a nice, that's why we need to start with shoulders back, chest out, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees, arms hang naturally. That's what you should look like at setup, not crunched. What do I see from mostly from women? I see a lot of women looking like this, okay? So where they're kind of sitting. Now, let's take a peek. Remember I showed you my ball? Hopefully you can see my, the ball here in the screen. Now, what did I see before? I told you that we need to have, if, you're, if your chest, if the girls are facing the ball at the top of your backswing, you haven't made a good turn. So there's no coil and there's no torque. And again, how do you know if you're an arms lifter? Do you hit your eight iron? As far as your seven iron, as far as your six iron? If the answer is yes, you are an arms lifter, okay? Because you get, again, because you're not creating coil and torque, you're not using the loft of your clubs, so you're gonna hit several clubs the same distance. That's why you need that coil and torque, okay? So as I mentioned, ladies tend to sit. Well, ladies, check this out. See where my chest is? Okay, we're gonna come back to this in a minute. All right, brush the grass. What do I mean by brush the grass? I'm gonna grab some grass here. Do, 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 do. 
instant grass, instant grass, I like that. So brush the grass. The key to brush the grass, and I need you to do this on every swing. This is where, so if you're someone who when you hit your golf shot, it's really hard to get it up in the air, you kind of hardly get it off the ground, or you do the dreaded worm burner when it runs across the ground and you know do that. So if that's you, this is what we're doing wrong, and we can, we can help change you. And if you struggle with your irons, this will be a game changer. Okay, so what is brush the grass? So take a look at this golf swing. That's a pretty good looking golf swing, I'm not gonna lie. However, guess what? I probably would have hit that maybe 80 yards and it would have been this high off the ground. Why? Because I didn't brush the grass. Your whole purpose in full swing, now we're just all talking full swing here, not any short game here, but in full swing, your whole purpose is to brush what the ball is sitting on. So if the, brush is sit if the ball is sitting on grass, you need to brush the grass. If the ball is sitting on a tee, you better brush that tee. And if the ball is sitting on sand in a greenside bunker, not a fairway bunker, but in a greenside bunker, you better be brushing the sand or that sucker is gonna be launching out of that trap, okay? You need to brush what the ball is sitting on. So when I say brush the grass, what I'm looking for when you make your swing, listen carefully, just that little brush. Now women say to me all the time, well Lisa, I don't wanna hurt my hands or my wrists, you know, by taking that big divot. Hey ladies, 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 uh, I'm not looking for that big beaver pelt. Like I know I'm from Canada, but I'm not the Hudson Bay Company trying to find that beaver pelt out there. All you need to do is brush the grass. It can be like a little beacon strip, just a tiny little, just a little brush of the grass. It doesn't have to be those big, huge divots you see on the PGA Tour and the LPGA Tour, but you must brush the grass, okay? So really, really important. So how do we brush the grass? So if you're someone who's not brushing the grass, here's my tip for you. Number one, take a practice swing. I'm a huge fan of practice swings. Not that when you're slowing up the pace of play, do your practice swings while your playing partners are getting ready. But take a practice swing, and if you don't brush your, the grass in the practice swing, how the heck are you gonna brush it in your real swing? So take a practice swing and brush that grass, okay? Once you brush the grass, then you're good to go, okay? So you gotta brush that grass, and then you're good to go, okay? So if you don't brush that grass, can you take a second practice swing? Yes, you may take a second practice swing. And, and very quickly, because again, pace of play, ladies, we got to keep that pace of play. Women are fast. We all know, you know, they think that women are slow. Uh-uh, we're the fast ones. It's often the guys that are in the backyards, in the woods, in the ponds. Not us, ladies. We're usually straight down the pipe. You know, a little bit errant sometimes, but, you know, we're fast. Ladies are fast. So let's keep that reputation, right? Now, are you allowed to take three practice swings? No, you can't take three practice swings. Why? Because it's annoying and no one wants to play with you and you're gonna be too slow. So no, no three practice swings. If you, after two practice swings, if you still haven't brushed the grass, hope and pray. Hope and pray and just go back and, and then hit your shot and work on it next time, okay? So if you don't brush the grass, if you're someone struggling with brushing the grass, here's your swing thought. What you need to do, your key is, you need to keep your chest level. If you're not brushing the grass, what's happening is you are, one of two things, you're either straightening your legs, see how I'm lifting, raising there, or you're lifting your torso. It's one of those two things. You're straightening your legs or you're lifting your torso. So if you are struggling with brushing the grass, here's your swing thought. Your key, key swing thought is lead shoulder. Initiate the backswing with your lead shoulder. Can you see when you do that, look how your chest stays level. So anytime you're not brushing the grass, realize, uh-oh, I've come out of my posture. And think about it. Check this out. Let's say that you only, uh, oh, here we go. If you only lift by about one inch, you lift your torso just one inch, that's it. You're gonna be hitting halfway up the ball. Halfway up the ball, you're gonna be hitting. If you lynch, lift almost two inches, you're barely gonna be catching the forehead of this ball, barely catching the forehead. And again, that's that cold top. So it's not a massive lift. And be aware, please, please be aware of anyone who tells you when you hit a, uh, that low worm burner, oh, sweetheart, you lifted your head. You lifted your head. No, you didn't lift your head. That is terrible advice. And remember, if you've seen all my videos, you'll know I told you to shut down those, those uh, golf course coaches, right? If it's not a PGA of Canada pro, you shouldn't be listening to them, okay? Or unless they play on a tour, you shouldn't be listening to them, okay? So again, uh, lifting your head is terrible advice. I could go outside right now. I could lift my head uh, as high as humanly possible. I can make a golf shot and I can hit this ball 170 yards with my head because it has nothing to do with lifting your head. What happened is you came out of your posture. So again, don't let anyone tell you you lifted your head, you came out of your posture. And to fix it, what you do is you really focus on a level chest and lead shoulder. And ladies, back to our posture tip. Remember our posture tip? Why is it that so many ladies end up not being able to get into the air? Watch this. 
If you are that person in your posture that when it's time to, to, to bow at the waist, instead you tuck in, see how I'm in a sitting position? This is, I see a lot of ladies in a sitting position as they start their golf swing. Holy cow, your chest is facing here. How the heck are you gonna brush the grass? Your chest has to be facing the golf ball. If your chest, whoops, here I'll go this way. If your chest is not facing this golf ball, good luck brushing the grass, okay? So there we go. Good luck brushing the grass if that chest isn't facing the golf ball. That's why posture is so important. Your chest has to be facing the golf ball, okay? That's how we brush the grass. All right, I see, I see Sharon here. Will you be giving in clinics in Canada? Oh, thank you for asking. Yes, I, so I do women's golf schools. Why? Because I'm a huge proponent. I started women's golf schools because I believe so strongly in getting more women out into the game. So this is my sixth year doing women's golf schools. I just launched my schools in the United States, uh, in Phoenix and Orlando for uh, February and March 2022, and I will be doing Canadian golf schools. I've got two just out of Montreal at Le Versant Golf Course uh, in August, and I'm hoping to be doing some more. I had clinics planned in Victoria and Kelowna that are postponed due to COVID, darn it. Um, but I'm hoping to, uh, to get those going and my ones in Calgary. But in 2022, my plans are to do schools in uh, Kelowna and Victoria, British Columbia, Alberta, Ontario, Quebec, and I'm hoping the Maritimes. And I, I, if I can try to do Manitoba and Saskatchewan, I will, I will definitely try to get in there as well. But uh, I will definitely for 2022. And for anyone who wants information, my website's lisalongball.com and there's a golf school tab. And you can be added to my little list there and I'll email you uh, less than eight times a year, but to give you, tell you when my golf schools are. So thank you. Oh, thank you for asking. So I am going to be doing those. And uh, GTA, Tammy, I will absolutely be coming to the greater Toronto area. And Paula, Ontario's patiently waiting. And I was there the year before, but darn it, COVID. So I will be back. I promise. I promise. Uh, waiting in Ontario from Stephanie and August in Montreal. Edwina, yes, I'll be at uh, Loversant Golf Course there. And it's all on my website, lisalongball.com. So, and come to Newfoundland. Colleen, I, that is my one one province that is the only province in all of Canada I haven't been to and, and so I will make it a mission to come to Newfoundland I promise all right let's get going on our tips again so you know that we've talked about grip posture uh, turn the shirt turn the skirt brush the grass now again for any of you who follow my golf videos the next greatest tip is Finish your golf swing, finish your golf swing, finish your golf swing. Why? Because that's where all the power comes from. You can have all the coil and torque you want, but if you don't swing through that golf ball, you're losing so much distance. So what is finish your golf swing? Finish your golf swing means this. I want to see all the weight on the front side. When you make your golf swing, I should see the entire back sole of your shoe. All of your weight should be on your front side. I should see the entire back sole of your shoe and that club should be on your back, not up here. I see a lot of ladies finish their golf swings up here and I wanna see that club as close to your back as possible. Now you'll remember if you've seen my videos, my key to make sure you finish your golf swing, what is it? It is dirty toe, baby, dirty toe. And that means the big toe of your back golf shoe. So for my right-handed golfers, that's my right, but that's your right foot. And my lefties, it's your left. On the big toe of your back shoe, it should have a dirty toe at the end of the round if you finished your golf swing. So again, finish your golf swing. Now, how do we finish our golf swing? What happens is I think that so many ladies uh, and men and men get focused on hitting the golf ball that once they, they do the turn the shirt, Boom, they do the turn the pants, they hit the golf ball, and then what happens? They just cruise through to finish. Let me hit a ball here, let me hit a ball here. All right, see if you can see this here. Do, 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 do. Make sure my mat is in view. Oh, it's not quite in view here. I'll move it back a bit. There we go, okay. So what I see is they turn the shirt, they turn the pants, but then they stop swinging at the ball. So turn the shirt, turn the pants, and they stop here. Okay, and that arm, again, the, the hands are up here. For your hands to stop here or up here, you had to stop swinging down here. You physically had to slow down here for you to stop your hands here. And that kills your distance. Here's a great swing thought. I want your club moving fastest two to three feet past impact. So I want you to swing through this ball. That's why so many of you, when you do a practice swing, your practice swings like do, 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 and you're like, that was awesome. And then you go to you do your real shot and you're like, yeah, that didn't look like my practice swing. Why? Because when there's no ball there, it's quite easy to keep swinging all the way through. 
often when we put that ball there, you think your job's done the second you hit your golf ball, so you start to decelerate. No, I need you to think that golf ball isn't there. I need you to think, swing through this golf ball. And again, if you swing through it, watch this, if you swing through it, it will literally pull you to that front side. So if you're swinging through that golf ball, it will pull you to the front side. So that's your swing thought. I want you to think, swing through this ball, club head should be moving fastest, two to three feet past impact. I want dirty toe. I want to see the entire back sole of the shoe. Have your playing partners check that out to see if that's what's happening. All right, I see that uh, uh, Joan is watching, so thanks so much. Oh, no dirty toe uh, from Joanne yet, yet. She's gonna get onto that dirty toe. And Sarah uh, says, merci. So, oh, I'm so glad you have enjoyed it. You're welcome. And uh, do you have a practice swing on every shot? I do because I want to know I'm brushing the grass. But I also get if you're shooting 120, 130, you get tired and I get that. But for me, I think it's worth it because I like to know, can I brush the grass? And especially on any uneven lies. So if you're on any of a hill lie or you're not, quite, you've got to make sure, do I need to choke up on my club a little bit? Do I need to stay down longer? So again, that's where it's really, really important on those uneven lies. Okay. And Wanda says, I love your energy. Thank you, Wanda. So, so, so kind of you. Okay. So we've talked about our, all the keys so far. We know that uh, turn the shirt, turn the skirt, brush the grass, finish your golf swing. Let's just talk about uh, the two biggest swing faults that I see. One is slicing and one is uh, hooking or pulling, okay? So why do we slice? Many, many reasons why we slice. The number one reason why you slice or the reason you're slicing is at impact, your club head is open. So instead of your club head being square at impact, it is open, okay? So that's, that's the whole reason you're slicing. And what causes that to happen? One thing that can cause it to happen, grip pressure. So if your grip pressure on a scale of one to 10 is 2,643, when you come through impact, can you see how that club face is open? It will be open because you're not allowing, you're not allowing the club to turn naturally because you're squeezing it too tight and you will slice it all day long. So if you're a slicer, here's your big swing thought. And I do this before every golf shot. This is one of the key swing thoughts for me when I compete at the World Long Drive Championships when I'm trying to hit it as far as humanly possible, but I use it in all my golf swings. My last thing I do right before my takeaway, I take a deep breath out. <sighs> then I swing. So why do I do that? By taking that deep breath out right before your backswing, it relaxes your hands, it relaxes your forearms, and that allows you to create speed. So again, that can help fix your slice immediately. What's another reason that we slice? And that's just to finish your golf swing. So again, let me grab a ball here. If you don't, let me see, can we see that in the camera? Good. If you don't finish your golf swing, let me make a swing here. Now, for anyone that could see that, that ball missed the net completely. It went straight, I'm hitting right-handed, it went straight right in my net. Why? Because I didn't finish my golf swing, so it left that club face open. So if you're a slicer, you just simply might not be finishing your golf swing. And remember, I told you earlier, my baseball players and my softball players really struggle with this because in baseball and softball, they do a great job of turning the skirt, but they leave weight on that back foot. And by leaving weight on that back foot, that opens the club, say goodnight, okay? So those are two reasons we slice. Now, why do we pull? Now, remember I talked to you about the importance of turn the shirt, turn the pants, turn the shirt, turn the pants. So if you're a right-handed golfer and you're hitting it left a lot or a lefty hitting it right, that's considered a pull or maybe a hook. Again, many things can cause it, but what I find the number one reason that causes it is that instead of going turn the shirt, turn the skirt, you're going turn the shirt, turn the shirt. So that means at the top of your backswing, instead of turn the pants, your first move in your downswing is that back shoulder. It's your back shoulder, and what happens is your upper body outraces your lower body. It's gonna kill your distance because watch this. If I go turn the shirt, turn the skirt, look at all that coil and torque at impact. If I go turn the shirt, turn the shirt, my hips are facing the ball, my shoulders are facing the ball, there's no coil, there's no torque. So again, if you're pulling it, you've probably started with that back shoulder and you could be going, turn the shirt, turn the shirt. That's gonna create a pull, it's gonna kill your distance. Let me hit one for you. Here we go. So again, if you go turn the shirt, turn the shirt, turn the shirt, turn the shirt, and again, that went towards the left side of my net, it's my upper body outraces my lower body, kills my distance and pulls. So what's your fix? Your fix for my pullers is you have lazy guts. When you get to the top of your backswing, your first move in your downswing needs to be turn your guts, turn that lead hip, whatever it is that makes it turn. And again, it's a turn, not a slide, okay? Turn, not a slide. All right, how are we doing time-wise? Oh, two more minutes left. 
Last two minutes, what we're gonna cover, my favorite tip here, uh, chipping the flamingo. Thank you for all the comments I've been receiving over the last few weeks of how many of you have loved the flamingo. The flamingo is a chipping technique that has helped so many of you. It's a simple chipping technique, but man, I've had so many people tell me they're chipping in, they're chipping it close in one putting and their scores are dropping like a stone. So what is the flamingo? Let me switch clubs here. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go a sand wedge here. All right, so what is the flamingo? So the flamingo is, remember we talked about ball position, and if you missed my ball position video, please go back to the Golf Town Facebook page or YouTube channel. It's also on the Lisa Longball YouTube channel and Golf Town, or, and sorry, Lisa Longball Facebook page, so you can find it either place, and you'll learn about ball position. But basically what I say is ball position for every single club in your bag is feet together. Let's see if you can see this. I'm gonna move that ball back. Feet together, move the lead foot, the width of a club foot head, back foot to comfort. That's your ball position for every club in your bag, except driver, okay? Then, what I want you to do for the flamingo, I need all the weight on the front side. What I find is a chipping issue, is what where people really struggle in chipping, they go to chip and that weight comes to their back foot. Then it's cold tops, chunks, leaves it there, that's a nightmare. So you have to, in the flamingo, it's feet together, move the lead foot the width of a club head, bring the back foot a little closer here, but I want all that weight on the front side the whole time. What you're gonna do is let your arms hang naturally, always let your arms hang naturally, and you'll notice the butt end of the club is already facing your lead hip. So don't push your hands forward. I don't wanna see your hands too far forward, but as you can see, just by letting those arms hang naturally, the butt end of the club is facing my lead hip. And now what I want you to do is a putting stroke. I just simply want you to do a putting stroke. But the key, 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 key for the flamingo, you have to brush the grass. If you don't brush the grass, so a practice swing is so important with the flamingo. If you don't brush the grass, you're still gonna skull it, cold top at the whole nine yards. So do that setup, brush the grass. Now, instead of what you're gonna do is you're gonna use that same technique, but you're just gonna switch your clubs. So if you have a short, club, a short flag, a red flag, you're gonna maybe use your 60 degree wedge or sand wedge. If you have a white flag, you might use your pitching wedge or your nine iron. If you have a white flag, same technique, because the ball's gonna roll more because it has uh, less loft. And if you uh, are, have a blue flag way at the back of the green, you use your seven iron, a bump and run. Same technique, just switch the club, okay? So again, let's do that here, feet together, move the lead foot the width of a club head, uh, back foot, uh, we're gonna bring in a little bit for this flamingo, okay? I wanna see you use a putting stroke. See how I'm not breaking my wrists at all? Don't break your wrists. We're using a putting stroke and brush the grass. Practice brushing the grass, then come up to your ball and you're gonna make the same stroke, brush that grass. And I guarantee you, you're gonna have fantastic contact. Just switch the club. So that's the flamingo. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it if you haven't tried it. And Barbara says the flamingo works great. Boom, boom. CJ uh, said she loves the flamingo mental image. Awesome tip. And Jean said from uh, uh, Exeter, Ontario, uh, thanks for all your helpful tips. So you're so welcome. All right, so that's our first half hour of the greatest tips. You can go back and watch this anytime, but I wanted to piece all the greatest tips together so you could see what it looked like. So I think that's really important, okay? All right, let's get to your questions. All right. I have all my little notes here. Okay, question number one. Uh, my grip pressure seems tight on my club in my downswing. How do I fix that? Uh, do you have a tip for that? And that's from Monique, that's from Monique. So here's the thing, we talked about grip pressure. As I said, one of the best things to do is relax that grip pressure, just take a deep breath out right before you go. But Monique said she finds on her downswing, that's when she gets a little tight. So I, I consulted with my PGA of Canada professional, Paul Horton, my golf court coach, and please, I always recommend, go see your PGA of Canada, LPGA or PGA of America, or PGA wherever in the world you may live, instructor, you'll wanna see a pro for the tips. So my instructor said he finds, when, he said everyone's gonna be a little bit tighter on their downswing, so don't worry too much about that. You are gonna be a tiny bit tighter, that's why you have to start relax because you will get a little tighter on the downswing but what he said he finds people get really tight when they focus too much on content a contact should I say so he said swing through really just focus on swinging through not contact and he finds that re relaxes your grip pressure a bit so I hope that helps Monique Okay, next question. Oh, not walking in your opponent's line, uh, putting line. This is really important. This is super important because we, 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 you know, we wanna be respectful of our playing partners. So what does uh, uh, she mean by that? So the question is, uh, so let's say this is the cup. Let's say this is the cup and the ball is right here, okay? So you can see the ball and the green ball is, is the cup, okay? So when she says don't walk through your partner's playing line, so when you've all marked your balls and you're ready to go and you're walking around the green and let's say you have to walk through your playing partner's line, as you can see, if I take a step right here, I'm creating spike marks and I'm imp impacting the grass 
right between her ball and the cup. So don't do that. That's not a, a polite thing to do. That's not great etiquette. So my recommendation, if you can, I always try to walk behind the person. I always try to walk behind the person. And if you can't, I make a super intentional step so people know I'm cognizant of their putting line. So if I see, oh, there's her putting line, you'll see I actually do this. And I know that sounds silly, but then my playing partners appreciate it because they know I'm aware of it. Now, not only do you have to, to do that to the line to the cup, remember the through line. What's the through line? Let's assume that she misses her putt and it goes past the hole. So it's going to go past the hole. So it would be rude of me. It would be rude of me to walk in the same line behind the cup because that's going to affect her, what we call through line if she missed the putt. So again, I just, if I, if I do that, I try to take a bigger loop out. So I'm not even coming close or I take that ginormous step. So she knows uh, that I'm being aware of her line. So again, that's really, really cool to do. Um, Sharon says, thank you so much for addressing in the putting line. You are most welcome. Welcome, Sharon. You are most welcome. And actually, it was Sharon who actually asked the question, so that's perfect. That's why I wanted to address that. So you're so welcome, Sharon. Um, next question. How do you keep your swing as you're turning 80? So turning when we age. So for all of our senior golfers out there, first of all, yeah, golf is the perfect sport to be playing into our 80s, 90s, as long as we're staying fit and healthy. But our bodies are going to fail us a little bit as we get older. So what are some tips? So if you are struggling with turning as we age, and gosh, we all do, um, Again, I talked to my PG of Canada coach. Number one, he said, and I know it sounds simple, stretching. The older we get, sadly, the more we have to stretch. So you can't just race into the car parking lot doing up those shoes on the way to the first tee box and go out and hit the ball like you could when you were 20. The older we get, we have to stretch. So even if you spend a half an hour or an hour stretching at home or whatever amount of time you have, I guarantee you that will help your game. The other thing that I want to talk to you about is remember we talked about for all your clubs in full swing, not short game, but full swing, I want to see you fan your lead foot. So if the feet are dead straight here, I want to see you fan that lead foot. Again, that allows you to turn that hip so much easier, allows you to turn or turn the guts. That will help all of your uh, full swings from irons all the way up to fairy woods hybrid driver go longer. It allows you to turn more. So I recommend everybody fanning their lead foot just that little bit, okay? Up to 45 degrees, okay? Obviously, I don't want to see people out here, okay? Just a, up to 45 degrees. Now, if uh, as we age and it's harder to turn, uh, you are allowed, my coach Paul Horton said, go ahead and fan both feet as we age. And remember, in my other tip, I talked to you uh, a few weeks back, that if you have knee issues or back issues, you can also fan both feet. But if you're, if you're very healthy, go ahead and keep that back foot straight. But as our aging, for our aging golfers, I, uh, Coach Paul said, go ahead, fan the front foot, fan the back foot, but maybe not as far. I don't want you to be as far as 45 degrees. Just fan it a little bit, and it'll make it so much easier to create that turn. So as we age, if you're struggling with that turn, go ahead and fan both feet. I think that'll help. All right. And uh, that question was from Angie. So thanks, Angie. Okay, perfect. Next page. Um, okay. Uh, oh, this is a question that I got from um, uh, Women Who Golf. So on the Facebook page, Women Who Golf, tons of ladies asked, can you turn too much? Now, this is a good question because the biggest issue, as I said, 80% of women don't hit it to, uh, 200 yards because their arms lift her, so they're not turning at all. But can you turn this too much? One of the people that asked this question is super flexible. And uh, the, my, my coach said the answer is yes, you can turn too much. You do want to turn. Definitely turn creates coil and torque but you can turn too much what he said um, from his uh, what he sees from ladies who are trying to turn too much especially if you're flexible what he sees is they're trying to turn everything so he sees tons of movement he sees tons of movement in the whole golf swing which absolutely kills your distance remember we want to wind up and unwind and that means we stay around the same axis you do not want your body to be shifting at all okay remember it's turn the lead shoulder we're turning around our spine. We're not moving. And so what he sees, when he sees women who want to get extra turn, he sees this, and they lift their, they lift their foot. Now, there are definitely some players in history, Jack Nicholas, I believe, being one of them, that would lift their foot uh, as they're doing their turn. My coach, Paul Horton, said he doesn't recommend it. Keep your feet planted. And he said you really have to focus on turning uh, around your spine uh, so, that you aren't, so that you aren't doing that. So he's saying that you, you don't want those hips to be turning with your shoulders because now you You've ruined your coil and torque. You want to keep those hips here, turn those shoulders as far as humanly possible, then we turn that lower body. So again, be very aware of that, um, that you're not lifting that foot and try to turn around your spine. Okay, so hopefully that's a, a good uh, tip that helps you there. Okay. 
do 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 do. Um, next one is uh, uh, this is from Patsy. Patsy asked, um, "What's the best advice to swing through so I'll stay posted?" And again, we talked about this, and this is the uh, uh, finisher golf swing, finisher golf swing, finisher golf swing. So again, what I said one one great swing thought is to think I want your club head to be moving fast as three feet past the ball, and if it's doing that, it will literally pull you to the front side. So have that club head uh, moving fa three feet past the ball. And another great swing thought, which I said, just pretend the ball is not even there by swinging through that ball. Like you want to think, um, you want to have what I call the LPGA tour finish. And that is that we finish a golf swing all that way on the front side. And uh, again, ideally, here's another way to make sure you stay posted. When you get to the, to the finish, I don't, like ideally, you'll have your hips facing the target. But if you're even killing it with your turn, your hips can be past the target. So again, if you're struggling finishing and posting, try to think, don't just get your hips to the target, try to even get them past the target. And again, try to really focus on, uh, on finishing that golf swing, okay? So really, really, and swing through the ball. Through the ball, don't, you're not trying to hit the ball, you're swinging through the ball, so swinging through the ball. And I just wanna say hello, I see that Heidi's watching so, so much, and uh, Lynn says focus on the right knee as a pillar so you don't overturn. So again, that's a great tip there. Um, um, to, to, to do that so that you're you're focusing on posting up over here uh, over that front leg that's a great swing thought so I like that as well too okay let's go to our next tip here just a sec do to do to do to do here we go and that is um, oh please cover what over the top is and this is from Alexa so what does she mean by over the top so you'll hear that phrase uh, in golf a lot and that had to do with my turn the shirt turn the shirt so over the top means when you get to the top of the backswing, that, that back shoulder is starting your downswing. That's an over the top move, okay? And it can create, again, a myriad of problems. So how do we fix that, that over the top move? And this was a great tip, again, from my coach, Paul Horton, is what he said, he wants you to swing. So again, let's say normally that your target would be dead straight ahead, okay? So you're normally your target is what we would call 12 o'clock, okay? Your target's at 12 o'clock. He said, get an alignment rod, or just you can even use a club for this, and instead of uh, having it uh, pointed at 12 o'clock, he wants you to point it at 11 and seven. So this would be 12 and six, and he wants it, or sorry, pointed at uh, one and seven, should I say. He wants it pointed at one and seven, okay? So uh, uh, instead of it being at 12 o'clock, point that alignment stick at one and, one and seven, and here we go. He said when you're swinging, you still want to have your feet, you still want to have your feet pointed at 12 o'clock, but when you swing, you're going to try to swing and keep your club on, on that line between the one o'clock and, and uh, seven. And that will really help train to get you out of that um, to, to over the top. The other one, and this is a big one for me, is when I get to the top of my backswing and, and I'm pulling it or over the topping it, then my swing thought is turn your guts. Turn your guts. So even, here's a great drill, just do it in slow motion. So do your whole swing. So practice lead shoulder, slow motion, get to the top of the back swing, and even just practice a few where you're doing this. Even if you have to go slow, slow, brush the grass. Go, so do that, and then as you're feeling more confident and that this is starting first, then you can add a bit more speed and a bit more speed. So slow it right down, or try that alignment drill uh, that Coach Paul uh, shared with us. I love that too. Um, and then it says, Joelle said, my BF reached it down into the cart to brush the dirt off my left toes. I said, leave it there, I earned it. Yeah, dirty toe. I love that, Joelle. Thank you for sharing that. That made me smile. Okay, let's look at our next one, and that is, um, uh, do, 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 oh, sorry, and this is from, oh, show your, oh, golf swing in slow motion. So this is from Kathy, and she said, Lisa, could you show your golf swing in slow motion? And you know what I'm going to do? The next time I play golf, I'm going to take a video of me doing a swing in slow motion, a drive. So I'll post that onto my um, uh, Lisa Longball Facebook page, on my Twitter, and at Lisa Longball, and Instagram at Lisa Longball, and I'll see if Golf Town will share it as well. Just a slow-mo video um, that will show you uh, what it looks like, what it looks, what the whole swing should look like if the, the lead shoulder starts, the guts start, the brush, the grass, all the way through to finish. So I will, I'll show you one right now just in front of you, but I'll do a slow-mo video so that you can watch it and I'll post that. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. I'll post that in the next week here. So a slow-mo, so you're, this, is, this is me going in super slow motion, how your swing should look. We're going to start with the lead shoulder. 
So lead shoulder is gonna go turn, 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 turn. My girls are facing behind me. I get to the top of my backswing. Now, at the top of my backswing, now ladies, here's a little power leak. I don't wanna see that weight shifting outside the, the back foot. So ladies, here's a little tip. I want you to think, keep that weight on the inside of your back foot. So again, slow-mo, lead shoulder, get that weight into the inside of the back foot. The girls are behind me. First move in the downswing is my lower body. Lower body, lower body, lower body. I'm gonna brush the grass. I'm gonna keep swinging through all the way to my front side, dirty toe, um, club to the back, okay? So I will get that slow-mo video for you and I will send, uh, I will post it uh, in the next week. That's a great, great question, okay? Oh, and Bryn says, where the heck do you get all your energy? You know what, I was an elementary school teacher. This is me, I was just born this way. I've never even had a cup of coffee in my life. I just, I, I have, I'm high energy, I'm high energy. I do not like the word, I'm gonna say that. I hate the word hyper, I'm not hyper. I am not hyper, I'm high energy. That's really important, and you know what? I just have a love for life. All right, here we go. Uh, let's look at, do, 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 do. Oh, uh, this is another one that Kathy had asked, and that is, uh, what do you, how do you turn your wrists over? So I asked my coach, Paul Horton, I'm like, what do you think about the hold to turn the wrists over? He's like, uh, because remember, if you've heard the, what I've discussed, in the turning the wrists over. I don't ever want you in your golf swing to think small muscles. I don't want you to think hands. I don't want you to think wrists because women say, oh, should I pull my arm down? Should I do this? No, 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 no. I want you to think big muscles. And if you're relaxed and using your big muscles, everything will fall into place. That's why I talk, turn the shirt, turn the pants. I'm not talking wrists and hands, small muscles. I'm always talking big muscles, okay? But my coach Paul Horton said about the wrists, this is what he thinks she means. He said, what's happening is he said, when you're thinking wrists, so what, when people get through their golf swing, they get to impact, they're told to turn their wrists over, that you're supposed to intentionally turn your wrists over. And he said, that's a terrible swing thought. You don't want to intentionally turn your wrists over. It should be natural. So how do you get it to be natural? So my coach said, get them to do baseball swings. So what I want you to do is hold your club at about chest level, okay? At about chest level. And you're going to make some swings uh, as, a ba at ba as a baseball bat. So swing like a baseball bat. And if you just swing, swing 20 times, like a baseball bat, and when you do that, your hands naturally turn over. Your hands are naturally turning over, and that's going to help you to uh, get that sense of the hands naturally. So do 15, 20 of those, then go ahead and make a golf swing. Then do another 15, 20 of these, and again, this will help your, hand, um, your wrists naturally turn over. And he said sometimes people slice because what they think, they think they're supposed to try to keep their club face straight through impact. They're trying to keep their club face so straight through impact that when your club is faced straight through impact, it's actually gonna cause a slice because what's supposed to happen at impact, your, your hands or the club face should naturally be turning over right after impact. And that's where that baseball swing shows you that your hands will naturally turn over. The same, same thing is gonna happen in your golf swing. Don't intentionally do it, but if you have Relax grip pressure and you're using those big muscles again that baseball swing will help you train that so that's great um, Nathan says great basement tons of space see Nathan I do like a good basement so I can practice my baseball swing and my golf swing thanks Nathan I appreciate that okay next one here do to do to do, do, do okay um, oh you know what I'm gonna go back to one more so remember there was a few uh, things that my coach Paul said for extra drills one was for the over the top. So one was for the over the top and one was for how do I finish my golf swing? So this was an extra drill he gave me that can help with all of those with many, if you're having issues. So this is what he said. What I want you to do is tell your students to do three golf swings, start very slow, and you're not going to stop between your golf swings. So it's going to look like this. You're going to go one, two, and three. Now, since I'm not outside, I'm not brushing my grass, but I would expect you to brush the grass if we were outside, but I just don't want to mess up my carpet here. But so please brush the grass when you're doing that. Once that feels comfortable, take a break for a second. Then you're going to do three more. Okay. But you're going to add a little speed when you're ready. One, two, three. Okay. And then once that feels good, have each one get faster. So start your first one, second one's faster, third one's fastest. And it'll look like this. One, two, three. 
Okay? And he said by doing the, what he calls the, the, the three, three swing drill, the three swing drill, that can help you learn to finish on the front side. That can help you stop your slice. Because again, you're getting your, your arms to naturally move to where you should be. So he said those are some great drills. When you're having some swing issues, go back to that, th that three swing drill. You can do it 10 sets of three and adding speed each time. Whoo! You're gonna love it. It'll just naturally retrain your muscle memory. So I think you'll really like, like that. Um, and then Kathy, can you watch this uh, sometimes later? Yes, every one of these videos and all of the videos I did for the last 12 weeks are on the Golf Town Facebook page or go to the Golf Town YouTube page under playlists or my Lisa Longball um, uh, YouTube page under playlists and you'll see golf instruction there or the Lisa Longball clinics uh, or my Facebook. So yes, this video you can rewatch at any time uh, on, on those channels. All right. Um, um, okay, next question. Doo, 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 doo. Let me make sure I answered that was Kathy's. Okay, Francine. Okay, how do you spin a ball? Now, my coach said, you know what? He said, tell your students that, he said, the pros actually don't want to spin it. Most pros don't want to spin the golf ball because they want to have an exact distance that they're hitting it, okay? But if you find that you're hitting your ball and it's flying all over the place and you're not doing a good job, at least, you know, trying to stop it and spin it, if you're struggling with spinning it, how do you spin a golf ball? Or you want to just practice trying to spin it? These are the keys for spinning it. Number one, you have to have good conditions. So he said on the PG tour go look at those fairways they're almost like putting greens sometime very short tight thin grass he said that's so much easier to create spin and so sometimes again depending on your course conditions it might not be as possible to do that number two good contact you have to have ball first contact so ball first contact and then the divot should start after the ball so if you want to spin a ball you have to have ball first contact and spin it you also have to have speed you can't have what i call the driving miss daisy swing La, 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 la. And that's lovely and you'll be fine, but no, that's not gonna create spin. You've gotta, boom, you gotta be more aggressive, turn. And again, it's not swing harder, it's turn harder. Turn harder and you've gotta compress that golf ball. Hit down on it, ball first contact. Um, he also said that uh, the green conditions must also be really good for you to be able to spin it as well and really, important is that your grooves have to be uh, dry and clean. So I've, I've talked to you before that the grooves on your golf club, the reason you should always have a wet towel, dirty grooves, the, the golf clubs are expensive. And what makes a golf club work? The grooves. So if there's dirt and mud in there, it's not going to work as well for you. It's not going to create that spin. So you've got to clean it out and also dry it off so that you don't have a soaking wet face. That'll be too hard to make spin. So anyone looking to spin, that's what you do there. Okay. Doo -doo -doo. We're moving on to some extra questions now. Now, Golf Town sent me these questions from their Instagram. So they kind of took the top 10 questions from Instagram. What are the benefits of playing a seven wood over a hybrid? Now this is interesting. A seven wood, a loft of a seven wood is about 20 to 24 degrees. The loft of a four hybrid is also 24 degrees. So what's the, what's the difference between them? Again, it's personal preference. So if you prefer hitting a fairy wood, the shape of a fairy wood, it's going to have a bit of a longer shaft, go for it. Now it'll probably go a little bit longer with your seven wood versus your hybrid because the seven wood will have a longer shaft. So that would be kind of the difference. But again, it's, it comes down to personal preference. Reference, do you prefer the shape of a hybrid or a fairy wood? Okay, this next lady said, and we, there were no names. The, the names disappeared after 24 hours, so Golf Town apologized that none of the names came out with this. I'm a left-handed golfer and my miss is a left slice. How do I avoid the left side of the fairway? So again, that's the baseball drill. The baseball drill will help you get to the point you're not leaving that face open. And remember what I said about avoiding death last week? Uh, when people see water on the right-hand side, often what they do is they go to the left-hand side to avoid that water. No, no, no. You line up as the same side of trouble. So so if you are missing, if you are missing the fairway on the left, like if you're uh, slicing, if you're a left-handed golfer, of course your slice would be on the left side of the fairway. You, you want to line up on the left and aim way over to the right side. Now that's just a band-aid, obviously, until you can get to the driving range. But when you, sometimes when you're out golfing, you're so frustrated. But remember, if wherever death is or your miss is, go to the go to the same side as that and aim right far away from it to the opposite end of that. Okay. Oh, how do you calculate your handicap? Now this was a great question. So, so many ladies had asked this. So what is, first of all, what is a handicap? And I went to my uh, PG of Canada pro friend, uh, my friend Scott McLeod out of Kingston, Ontario, such a great guy, super knowledgeable. And I said, Paul, I'm sorry, uh, Scott, I said, Scott, talk to me about handicap. And he said, the most important thing you want to share about handicap is that it's an equalization uh, system so that anyone could have a match against anyone. So a five handicap could have a match against a 55 handicap. And so that's what the whole idea of having a handicap is. And number two, 
A handicap shows what your potential is. It's not your scoring average. It has nothing to do with your scoring average. It's just what your potential is. Okay. So now we've gone through a huge overhaul system in handicap in 2020, January of 2020, the world handicapping system came out and all the golf governing bodies started to follow this in January of 2020. Of course that was middle of COVID. So some of us haven't even heard about that yet. Right. But before, like in Canada, what would happen is you'd have to, you couldn't have a handicap until you had 20, 18 hole scores. Then what would happen? They'd take your best 10 of your last 20 and they would average those out and that would be your handicap. And then there'd be an equitable stroke control, meaning that as a single digit handicap, I couldn't take anything more than a double bogey. Even if I took trip, if I hit three over par, four over par, five over par in a hole, I couldn't write that down into the computer for my score, for my score. But then though it would be so different because in the, in the United Kingdom, they only use tournament rounds uh, to make their, their their uh, handicap super, super uh, consistent. And again, a tournament round versus regular average Joe with your friends on 18 holes on a Saturday afternoon, totally different. So the world handicapping system is now all the same. So the keys, here are the keys. There's so many much to it. So these are just going to be the keys of the world handicap uh, system. First of all, all you need uh, is just, a, you need less scores. Scott thought it was about five. I didn't, I wasn't able to double check that, but I, about five scores and you can already have a handicap. Um, until you have those five scores, um, the, the player will be until you have that, the maximum handicap, uh, would be uh, plus five. So, uh, so a par plus five strokes on any hole, if you haven't gotten to those five uh, rounds yet, so it'd be par plus five strokes. And then once you have five rounds in and, uh, now it takes nine hole rounds. So nine hole rounds, that's brand new. Nine hole rounds are taken into account, not just 18 hole rounds. And before the maximum handicap for men and women was a 36. 36? Well, on a par 72, that's 108. I know a lot of people shooting more than 108. Heck, I was one of them when I got started. So a 36 handicap wasn't really reflective of what most people were. So now the maximum handicap is 54, okay? And so the, the system is trying to be more inclusive of, of new golfers. And now equitable stroke control is so much easier. What it is, it's a maximum score for every hole is net double bogey. Net double bogey is the net maximum score for every hole. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, that's not fair. I'm a new golfer. And if it's a par four and I took a six, no, no, no net double bogey. So let me just explain that. So again, on, um, on a scorecard here, what it has on a scorecard is on every single hole, it will give you, do, do, this is my, my home course heritage point here, my, their, their scorecard here. And, uh, what there's going to be, a uh, there's going to be the first hole. It's a par five. And then it's going to say men's and ladies handicap three, and seven is what it said. So for instance, let's say I'm a five handicap. What that means as a five handicap, I get an extra stroke on the five hardest holes. Okay. So if I'm a five handicap, I would get an extra stroke on the, on the hardest five holes. So this for a ladies handicap, this is the number one handicap. So yep, I would get a stroke on this hole. Oh, that's a seven. Nope. Nine, three. I'd get a stroke on that hole. Sixth hardest. Nope. Five, fifth hardest, fourth hardest. Uh, and then, and so on and so forth. So there's only five holes that I get an extra stroke on. So meaning that on this first hole, it's a par five. That's the number one handicap. So as a five handicap, I stroke on that hole, which means it's actually a par six for me. So what that would be is that, so a net double bogey for me is if I shot, let's say I shot a, uh, an eight on that hole. If I shot an eight on that hole, so it, the par is five, it would actually be six because I get a stroke. So that makes it six. If I shot an eight, I'm allowed to take it. But if I shot a nine or a 10, that's over a net double bogey. So net for me would be plus that stroke. So six, and then two more over that. So double bogey, two more over that. And that would be an eight. So I can take eights on the, uh, if I got a stroke there, but I couldn't take nines and tens. I could only take an eight. So I know that's a little bit confusing. I know that's a little bit confusing, but that's kind of how it works. So the new handicap system looks awesome. And if you're interested in it, um, definitely go do it. But ladies, if you're a new golfer and you're struggling, just getting the ball in the air. And remember I told you to keep a scorecard with happy faces and sad faces and, and okay faces. Don't worry about a handicap unless you're competing in golf or unless you really, really want to track your handicap, which is awesome if you do, but unless you're there, go enjoy it. Go have fun. Enjoy this game. You don't need to be having a handicap unless, unless you want to compete, then you must, you must follow the rules of golf and the handicap. But if you're just out there and you're a new golfer, don't worry about it. But if you're interested world handicap system, so that's how that works. Okay.
All right, let's go to the next one here. Um, oh, it actually goes right into it. What does slope rating mean for a golf course? Okay, good. That actually leads right into our next point, course rating and slope. So several years ago, many years ago, doo -doo 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 -doo, golf courses said, hey, it's not fair. Shooting a 72 at Pebble Beach and shooting a 72 at my home track is probably not the exact same thing. One could be totally harder than the other. So it's not, it's not fair to just compare a 72 and a 72 on two different golf courses, right? So what, so the, what, the, what it is for course rating and slope so what course rating and slope is this is it, it, it means how hard is a hole or how hard is a golf course so there are officials from usga or golf canada or whatever country you live in that will they, there's raiders course raiders that go out and what they're looking for is length of a golf course they're looking for forced carries so from a tee box based on the average distance the golfer would hit you know is there a trap is there a body of water is there a big cavern that you have to hit over so how hard is it how hard is it is and so basically it will make all courses equal by doing a course rating and slope so for instance let's look here it says that and it's and there's a course rating and slope for men and women why because we're built differently like Annika Sorensen when she was the best female player on the planet competed at the colonial and gosh she is so phenomenal but she didn't make the cut and that didn't mean she's not freaking phenomenal it just means men and women are built differently so even when Annika was the best player in the world she didn't make the cut on the PGA Tour because men and women are built differently that's why there's a difference between course rating and slope uh, for uh, for for, the, for men and women. So let's just look at this really quickly. So th this is my only frustration with course rating and slope. I believe at course raters should rate every tee box for every gender. So that bugs me because I think the forward tee boxes, every single tee box should be rated for men and every single tee box should be rated for women. So it does bug me. As you can see here, there's no ladies, uh, there's no ladies course rating from the golds, the golds and blacks or the blacks. And I always play the blacks at, at my home course and I don't even have a course rating. So if I was trying to keep an official handicap, I can't because I don't have a course rating and slope. So that's frustrating. So for my lower handicap golfers, ladies, I know this really probably frustrates you. But anyway, so for instance, let me give you an example here. So let's look if you, if I did the desert heritage rotation uh, at heritage point, because they have 27 holes there. Uh, it, it's saying here, if I, if you're a man, if you're a man and you played off the back set of tees, the gold tees, it's 7,143 yards. It's a, it would be a par 72 for you. Uh, 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 that's, or that's, sorry, that's the par for the course. But if you're a man playing from the tips, it's actually the par for, for you would be 74.2. Now as a lady, I can't even tell you, but uh, let's go to the whites. Let's try the whites here. So for the, so for the whites for a man, uh, uh, is uh, so the par is 72 for men just regularly and 73 for women so for a man playing from the whites the par would actually even though it's a par 72 he would only get a par of 69.5 so again if he shot 72 that wouldn't be even par he'd have to shoot 69.5 for an even or 69 should i say uh for an even par and then if you go that's for men's if i go across it goes to ladies so as a lady if i played from the white tees it said the the the, the um par is actually 73 but for me as a woman playing from the uh, white tees it would, it would be uh, my par would be 74.5 so course rating and slope just evens off how difficult a golf course is and it all depends what's your gender and what tee box do you play from and uh and and that's fair and of course as you've heard me say tee boxes should not have a gender meaning that tee boxes are based on ability so if you're a really high handicap golfer you should probably be from the forward tees if you're a single digit like a five handicap or less i should be from the tips so i'm usually from the tips or the blacks that's usually where i go from as a as a low handicap golfer so and again if you're hitting it over 200 yards as a woman, you probably should go back one set of tee boxes. But again, it's all personal preference, but the tee boxes are for, for uh, uh, ability, not gender. Okay. All right, let's just go. I just want to say, I say thanks so much. I see Lee's watching and Diane, Patty, Joe, Maureen. Thanks so much, everybody. Okay, um, those were those were tough questions. So sorry that took a bit there. Uh, do all private courses have a dress code? Uh, I would say most. I would say most private courses do have a dress code, and it depends on the course on how strict it is. So sometimes the dress code at uh, the very strict golf courses, as a woman, your shirt would have to have a would have, either have to have a collar or sleeves. But it couldn't if you didn't have sleeves, you can't have a collar. That would be a pretty pretty particular golf course. Um, some golf courses require you for men to tuck their shirt in and, and, and so, so forth. And if very particular golf courses require a certain length of skirt or shorts for women, uh, or men, uh, but for, uh, for women, you you have to have a certain inseam and so forth. So that's at certain fancy, fancy golf courses often, but not always, but I would say most golf courses, uh, private golf courses do have a dress code, but it varies to how difficult it is or how uh, strict it is. Should I say, what's the difference between urethane cover golf balls and non urethane? 
So your thing would be more your high-end golf ball. So your high-end golf ball, doo -doo -doo, there we go, high-end golf ball uh, would have the urethane. So that's kind of your $50, $60 a dozen golf ball. And uh, on this particular packaging, this is the Callaway Chrome Soft X. This is what I use. So that's why I thought I'd share with you. It says here, uh, it says, um, new thinner proprietary urethane cover provides soft feel and excellent spin control. So the urethane is supposed to give you more feel and more spin. Often the non-urethane balls could be a little bit harder, so they're gonna maybe they could last a little bit longer. Uh, you could get a tiny bit more distance out of them, but they might might not have the same softness or feel to them, especially if you're trying to for your short game. Um, so again, and then also there's a big difference between two piece and three piece balls, but that would be the difference with that uh, with urethane. So and uh, uh, Leanne says, hey there, hey there, Leanne. Okay. Um, uh, this lady says, I'm a five foot nine woman with above average swing speed. Should I be in a men's senior flex or regular? So if you watched my uh, uh, a segment on uh, uh, golf equipment, I went to my professional club fitter, uh, Robert Penner of Ted and Dave Custom Golf, and he told me that most women's golf clubs are designed for women who are five two to five four. Now that being said, if I had my son down here with me, he's 14 years old, he's six feet tall. If we stood side by side, you would be shocked. Even though he's six feet tall, our fingertips would actually probably be at about the same height. So just because you're tall doesn't necessarily mean that you need much longer clubs it depends on how long your torso is or how long your legs are so it's super super important to make sure you get fitted by a professional club fitter so please go see a, a professional club fitter and then as for swing speed usually this is just a ballpark number but if your club head speed is 75 miles or less with a driver for women that would probably be a ladies flex shaft 75 to 85 miles an hour for driver would be about a senior flex shaft. 85 to 95 would be men's regular, 90, and then so on and so forth. So again, if you're slightly faster than average club head speed, definitely take a look at getting it. You could be fitting absolutely into a senior flex or men's, uh, or, or men's regular. And then the length of the shaft depends on how long your torso is and on, on your leg length as well too. Okay, what's the best club to hit out of the rough near the putting surface? Now my coach, I asked my coach Paul Horton this and he said, ooh, Lisa, that's a tough one. He said, when you're in the rough, here's the thing. When you're in the rough, you need more loft. So he definitely said more loft is, is, is your friend when you're in the rough around the greens. So he said uh, you, you, the highest lofted off in club, so maybe that's your 60 degree wedge or sand wedge because uh, that's really important. But he said when the ball comes out of the taller, thicker rough, he said it often runs more. So he said, again, that's why you also need more loft. So coming out of that, that uh, around the green, but it just depends on your lie. If it's uphill lie, downhill lie. And again, do you have 60 feet to the pin or just 10 feet to the pin? So he said it's going to depend, but when you're in the thicker rough, you need more loft. And when the ball lands, it'll probably roll farther. That's why more loft is important. Okay. Two more questions left and then we're all wrapped up here. Okay. Is my sand wedge only meant to be hit out of the sand on sand bunkers? Absolutely not. This stunned me. My co coach Paul said, Lisa, he said the sand wedge is the, is the second most important club in the bag only to putter. He said, you're going to make 43%. A person shooting a hundred will make 43% of their shots with their putter. Uh, and he said the sand wedge is the next most important important. Why? Because you'll use it everywhere. You'll use it in the, in, in the sand beside the green side bunker. You can chip with it. Remember I showed you the flamingo drill for any of those short flags. You can chip with it. It's a very versatile club. So no, definitely be chipping with your sandwich. Practice it with your flamingo. I think you'll absolutely love it. And I see Colleen's joined us from Squamish. I love Squamish. It's so beautiful out there. Okay. Last question. What is better to hit out of the rough lie on a par five, a hybrid or fairway wood? So if you hit a drive and it lands in the, in the rough, should you hit a hybrid and you have a long way to the green, should you hit a hybrid or a fairy wood out of there? Well, also consider an iron. Even though you have a long way to the green, you gotta get this out. So you need to have a more descending blow. You really need to hit down on it. And an iron, even though it's gonna lose a little bit of distance, could be your best choice. But if you're between a fairy wood and a hybrid, my coach Paul said absolutely hybrid. It's gonna cut through the grass easier, come out a little easier. The fairy wood just with its bigger head is gonna just get grabbed by the grass. So definitely between the fairy wood and hybrid, use a hybrid, but you might even have to use an iron if it's really thick rough okay and uh and it, uh, maureen said her father taught her that you have to be able to use every club in your bag and that's totally true well ladies i hope you've enjoyed my women's golf day segment here um i have absolutely loved these clinics with you thank you for letting me come into your living rooms your homes uh for the last 12 13 weeks here and again uh, to all women out there i'm so glad you enjoy this game please continue it and invite a friend bring a friend bring a friend a colleague a sister a mother and a grandma anyone out to come 
come enjoy this game. We want more women to enjoy this game. So please, please go enjoy it all together. And I'm sending big hugs to all of you. I've, I've loved and missed, uh, I'm gonna miss all this. I, I, I just love working with you all and I've so loved all the comments and everyone telling me how much they've dropped their scores or how much longer they're hitting it and they've got the dirty toe or the turn the shirt, turn the skirt. So keep it up, brush that grass, everybody. And and I, I know I know I'll be doing more clinics with Golf Town, so I'll, we'll keep you posted on that. And again, I'd love to stay connected with you. So my website's lisalongball.com. Uh, you can add, I have a little email list that I'll send out to you if you want to join there. And of course, on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, I'm at Lisa Longball. And I've got a, a, a Lisa Longball Facebook page and YouTube. Please also make sure you're following Golf Town for all their wonderful deals. And don't forget, Golf Town has a spectacular contest that uh, you still have another day or two to enter. And that is, if you had a great time at the clinic today, go throw on red and white, wear red and white. What you're going to do is you're going to post on your social media. Make sure you tag golf town. So at golf town or hashtag golf down at women's golf day or hashtag women's golf day and add that. And there's a beautiful P, uh, a Callaway LPGA tour bag from the ANA inspiration. The first uh, LPGA major of the year. This, this bag is off the charts. So you can go to the Facebook page on uh, my Facebook page or also golf town's Facebook page for all the rules and details uh, about that and go post today. You still have another at least day or two to enter that contest to win that wonderful tour bag. So again, thank you for joining me, everyone. I will go back and answer all the questions for anyone I missed. And I've so enjoyed being with you. Please stay connected with me and happy women's golf day, everybody. See you later.